31, we're swinging back over to some word problems. So like always, we should think about what are the variables, what is x, what is y, that kind of thing. This isn't going to involve slopes and y-intercepts anymore because we're not looking at linear modeling. We're going to be looking at quadratic modeling as we're in section 5.1. So here we go, it says among all pairs of numbers whose difference is 12, find the pair with the smallest product. What is the product? So a couple of buzzwords popping out. I hope we see smallest product, right? So they want a minimum value, okay? I also see pairs of numbers, right? So there's some pairs of numbers whose difference is 12. So I have two numbers that I'm dealing with. That's what a pair represents. So I have two variables. So I'm gonna just label x to be my first number, whatever that's equal to, and y might be my second number. And you can think of all sorts of numbers. Let me just give you an example. Um, a, a bunch of ordered pairs whose difference is 12, right? I could have something like 13 and one, right? I could have, I don't know, 30 and 18. Right, I could have uh, just a whole bunch of stuff. I could have, let's try um, a more fun one. What if I had negative three and negative 15, right? Their difference, if I subtract these two, is 12. Let me make sure, negative three minus and negative 15. Yeah, I can do math in my head, great. Um, so you've got all sorts of ordered pairs whose difference is 12. Now imagine if you multiplied these numbers, right? This would be 13. Goodness, I don't know what this one would be equal to. Let me get my calculator out. 30 times 18 would be, what, 540? Um, negative three times negative five would be 45. So you can see that with these different ordered pairs, right, these different pairs of numbers whose difference is 12, they have different products. And so one of these apparently has to be the smallest product. For the ones I've just sketched out right now, it looks like 13 and one, but I have no reason to believe that's the smallest one overall. So I, I wanna find these. All right, so with that, let me erase all of this. This is just leg work, warm up work to give you some idea about what's going on here. We need to get a formula for the product, all right? If you would like the smallest product, then come up with an equation that represents product. So that's the first thing. Well, I guess technically the first thing is define your variables. And then the second thing, come with, up with a product. And I'm gonna call the product just x times y, right? I would like to maximize this, or actually, excuse me, I would like to minimize this. I want the smallest product. So if you ever want to minimize or maximize something in a math class, come up with an equation for it. And you're gonna maximize and minimize all sorts of things, especially when you get into calculus. We want highs and lows. All right, now the, the problem I'm working with here is I have two variables on the right side of the equation and I need just one. So I need to swap one of these out. And, and we do have an equation here, right? We say their difference is 12. Is, right, that's that fancy math phrase for equal. So I know their difference is 12. Okay, now if I wanted to, I could solve for y. You could also solve for x, but I'll solve for y in this case. So I'm gonna move y to the right side of the equation and x to the, I'm sorry, and 12 to the left side. So I would get x minus 12 being equal to y, or really I'm gonna write it the other way. y is equal to x minus 12. So I can say this product is really x times x minus 12. And if I wanna expand this out, I'm gonna get x squared minus 12x. And I think you can start to see here, we have a parabola, right? We have a quadratic model or a quadratic function. And I also, because the leak coefficient is, is positive, I just wanna take note that this parabola opens up, which means if it opens up, right, you can imagine if I had an, op an upward facing parabola, I am going to have some kind of minimum at the vertex. All right, so that means this parabola will have a minimum value at the vertex. Okay, 
I'm gonna erase my little, my picture here. Actually, it doesn't matter, I don't need to erase it. Okay, so then let me find the vertex. Well, if I look at this parabola, I know that A is equal to one, B is equal to negative 12, and C is equal to zero. Okay, great. So if I wanna find the vertex, right, my X coordinate will be at negative B over two A. In this case, that will be a negative of negative 12 over two times, well, A was one. That's 12 over two, which is six. Okay, so from there, let me go ahead and see what I wanna do. It says find the pair with the smallest product. So at this point, I know X is equal to six. If I wanna find its pair, I'm gonna substitute X equaling six into the Y equation. So this would tell me Y, well, if that's equal to six minus 12, that means y is going to be equal to negative six. And sure enough, the difference of these two numbers is 12, right? You can see it right here. Six minus a negative six is positive 12. That checks out. But I, so I found the pair, but I have not found the actual product. So what is the product of these two numbers? Well, you can see that I could multiply them and get negative 36 because six times negative six is negative 36. But I also want you to see if you ever plug the x coordinate of your vertex back into the original function, what is the product when x is equal to 6? Well, that would be 6 squared minus 12 times 6, which would be 36 minus 72, which would ultimately be negative 36. So if I wanted to answer this question, right, in a sentence, the pair of numbers is six and negative six. Their product is negative 36. All right, so just to recap what we did here, the first thing you wanna do is identify the variables. There were two of them, okay? The next thing you wanna do is come up with the equation for the quantity that you either wanna maximize or minimize. And in this case, I wanted to minimize the product. So I wrote an equation for the product. Okay, now I noticed that there were two variables here, so the next thing I did was I took that equation so that there was only one variable on the right side. At that point, it's a parabola, so you're gonna find either the high or the low point using your calculator, or you can use the vertex formula because whenever you want the high or low of a parabola, it's gonna be the vertex. And then like always, make sure you're answering the question asked of you. So you saw me go back and it said, find the pair. Okay, so I found the pair of numbers and then find that minimum product or that smallest product. And I answered that as well. All right, we're gonna practice these word problems on example six. We're gonna deal with um, some areas and some perimeters in a rectangle. I'll see you in a few, bye.